Hey watch fam and welcome to another episode of Basically Watches. In this video, we're going to look at a rather lovely timepiece from IWC. That's the IWC Mark 16. And we're going to compare it against a super affordable alternative. The purpose of this video isn't to find out which is the better of the two, but rather to show to you what to expect from a luxury timepiece like the IWC and what can be had at an affordable price point, but is still of decent quality and a lot of fun. And before we jump into the video, if this is our first time meeting, my name is Oswin and welcome to the channel. I created this channel to share my love and passion for watches. And the goal of this channel is to create a highly engaged community of watch enthusiasts where we can share our love and passion for watches and in particular focus on affordable yet high quality timepieces. So if this is something that resonates with you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And now, without further ado, let's flip perspectives and jump into this video. Speak to anyone that is a watch connoisseur or someone attuned to luxury goods and chances are they probably heard of IWC. IWC, which stands for International Watch Company, was founded in 1868 by Florentine Ariesto Jones, an American engineer and watchmaker who decided to travel to Switzerland at the time. The brand has been around for over 150 years and makes a wide range of watches from hot horology with grand complications to pilot style watches like the Big Pilot and the Mark series. IWC watches are in the mid to upper tier of the luxury segment and their entry level watches like the Mark series starts at around $3,000. But what if there was an affordable alternative from another brand that has an equally fascinating and deep history behind it? Well, the good news is there is a watch from a German watchmaker, Laco. If you're new to watches, chances are you probably haven't heard of the Laco brand. But the brand has been around for nearly 96 years. The Laco brand was founded in 1925 by Frieda Lacher and Ludwig Hamel under the names Lacher and Co. This is where the brand derived its name from, Laco. So why did I decide to pair these two watches? To answer this question, we'll need to do a bit of a deep dive into their history to get an understanding of what they have in common. It was around the year 1935 when Adolf Hitler decided to reinstate the German Air Force, also known as the Luftwaffe, and five watch manufacturers, four German and one Swiss, were selected to supply the German Luftwaffe with pilot watches. In Germany, it was Arlanga und Zona, Wemper, Stover and Laco. In smaller numbers, the Swiss International Watch Company, aka IWC, who supplied watches to both the Axis and Allied forces, also manufactured some watches for the German Luftwaffe. So that is what the two brands have in common. They were both commissioned to manufacture watches for the German Air Force during that era. Hence the reason for comparing these two watches against each other. Now that we've covered the history, let's deep dive into the design elements of the Flieger watches, which is what they were often referred to. The original watches were big, around 55mm in diameter. The size accommodated large hand-bound movements typically used in pocket watches, but the BR, which is what they were called, was always meant to be a watch for the wrist, and apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. The large size made them easily legible and their black dials with white Arabic numerals further aided the task of precise reading. To correct for time discrepancies, the movements were capable of stopping the central second's hand by pulling the crown, which is commonly referred to as hacking, and they featured oversized diamond or onion shaped crowns that could be operated with the gloves on. The pilot style watches came in two designs, the pilot watch model A which is what this watch draws a lot of its design cues from, and the Pilot Watch Model B, which is this particular watch right here. 
So the Pilot Watch Model A was created in the 1940s for aviators and is characterized by a simple design with numbered hours. The dial with the large hour circle indicates the numbers 1 to 11. And for better readability, the Model A has a triangle with two dots in place of the Arabic numeral 12. The triangle made sure the wearer of the watch could see the hands at the 12 o'clock position at a glance, even in poor visibility or difficult flight conditions or under stress. These two points also make it easier to precisely set the watch in poor visibility conditions. The Model B pilot watches made the work of early navigators easier. A characteristic of the Type B aviator watches is the large minute numbers in increments of five along the edge of the dial. The classic hour division of 1 to 12 is given in Arabic numerals, uh, which is displayed in an inner additional ring. The traditional military aviator watches didn't have any manufacturing logos on them, which is quite different to the modern interpretations. Quite simply, this was to prevent additional useless elements from affecting the readability and functionality of the watch. Now that we've covered the history and the different design types, let's compare the two watches on the specs. So starting with the IWC, the IWC features a stainless steel case which measures in at 39mm in diameter. In terms of the case thickness, it's a very slim 10.7mm and lug to lug it's got a measurement of 48mm. Strap lug width is 20 millimeters, which tapers down to an 18 millimeters at the buckle. It's got a sapphire crystal and it's got a date function. In terms of the case back, it's got a standard stainless steel enclosed case back and it features a 60 meters water resistance. The dial on this particular model reference IW325505 is more elegant than the traditional Mark 16 dial, at least that's what I think about it. Now the purists in here might argue that this is not the true pilot's watch, but that's okay. I think that sectored dial and the Arabic numerals, I think, look a lot better and give it that striking feature compared to the traditional Mark 16 dials. And that's what I like about this watch as well. It's slightly different to the traditional pilot style watches, but still draws a lot of its design cues from the pilot style watch. In terms of the movement, it uses an ETA based ETA 2892 movement, which IWC modifies with their own spec replacement parts and offer better finishing, tighter tolerances, and better performance. It's not as costly as their in-house movements, but still a step or two above the off-the-shelf movements that it has sells to its customers. In terms of accuracy, the IWC regulated movements are capable of chronometer specs, which is roughly about 10 seconds a day. Jumping into the specs of the LACO, the LACO also features a stainless steel case which measures at 39 millimeters. In terms of the height, it's got a case height of 11.5 millimeters, slightly thicker than the IWC, but a shorter lug to lug width of 46.5 millimeters. And in terms of the strap lug width, it's got a lug width of 18 millimeters. This originally came on a gray NATO strap, but I put it on this pilot style leather strap which is aftermarket. It also features a sapphire crystal on the front. And in terms of the back, it's got a display case back which showcases that movement and it's got the Laco watches and made in Germany engraved on the rotor as well, which is a nice feature. I believe the back is also a sapphire crystal, at least that's what it said on their website. And it offers a 50 meters water resistance. In terms of the movement, the LACO refers to it as the LACO 21 movement, which is basically based on the Miyota 821A movement. Now this particular watch doesn't have a hacking uh, second hand. The dial is a nice striking blue color, so depending on when the light, where the light hits it, uh, it changes colors beautifully, it reflects lights beautifully, and that's a very, very nice touch, I think. In terms of the accuracy of the movement, this one, the Miyota 821A claims an accuracy of roughly about 20 to 40 seconds per day. So as you can see here, IWC far superior movement, better specs and uh, accuracy in terms of movement. 
Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, drop a one in the comment section below. If you're not enjoying the video, drop a two in the comment section below. Either way, drop a comment because it helps. Moving on to the loom, let me quickly switch off the lights to show you what that looks like. So as you can see here, the loom on the Laco clearly stands out. The IWC has a very, very functional loom as well. The hour hand, minute hand, and the numerals, the Arabic numerals, indices are all loomed. The Laco, on the other hand, very, very functional and superior room in terms of brightness. The hour hand, minute hand, second hand, all the numerals are all loomed, including the indices. And yeah, hands down, this is far, far more superior. Both are very functional loom, but in terms of brightness, Laco clearly the winner here. Here is a wrist preview to show you what the IWC looks like on my 7.25 inch wrist. It's a very beautiful, classy looking watch and it's a perfect dress piece. As you can see here, that 10.7 millimeter height sits nice and slim, very, very slim, easily slips under the cuff. And I love it because it's elegant yet understated and perfect for any corporate attire a formal function or formal event. You can even wear it casually. I wouldn't wear it to the beach or anything, but that's entirely up to you. And here is a wrist preview to show you what the Laco looks like on my 7.25 inch wrist. Once again, a really nice looking watch. Not as dressy as the IWC, but still you could wear it in a formal environment or a corporate environment. This one I think is probably in terms of versatility, slightly more versatile. In terms of the height, it doesn't sit too high with its 11.5 millimeter height. I think it would, uh, still wears quite well due to shorter lug widths and once again, quite easily slips under the cuff. Probably not as easily as the IWC, which is why I said, you know, I would prefer to wear the IWC in a more formal environment. As always, I wanted to show you what the watches look like on a shirt. So here's the IWC on a dress shirt. As you can see here, its slim and slender profile makes for a really nice dress piece and it easily slips under the cuff. So it would be perfect in a corporate business environment or a formal event. And here is a wrist preview to show you what the Laco looks like on a shirt. I think it works on a shirt, but it's not as dressy as the IWC. And being slightly thicker than the IWC, it doesn't fit under the cuff as easily. So my preference would still be the IWC for a formal event or a corporate business event. What about pricing? Well, this particular IWC model reference 325505 is no longer in production, but it still sells for anywhere between three to four thousand dollars on the secondary market. The current version, that is the IWC Mark 18, retails for around 6,800 Australian dollars, which is approximately 5,250 US dollars. This particular Laco watch, which they refer to as Laco Basic on their website, they offer it in the 39 millimeters and a 42 millimeter version, and both of them retail for the same price of 340 euros, which is approximately 410 US dollars. As I mentioned earlier, it came on a gray NATO strap, but they do have an option of purchasing an additional leather strap as well. Now, similar to the IWC, the Laco offers several variations of the pilot style watches from the basic, that is with the logo, to the original version, which is designed to emulate the original pilot style watches used during the World War II era. And that one doesn't feature a logo. They sell for approximately 900 euro. They also offer a chronograph version of this, which features a Valju 7750 movement, which is a workhouse movement and a really solid chronograph. One of the questions I quite often see is what makes the IWC so special and so expensive? IWC makes several pilot style watches in different price ranges. They range from the big pilot with an in-house movement and a massive seven-day power reserve to the Mark series, also known as the Spitfire. This particular watch is modeled on the iconic Mark 11. 
The Mark 11 is considered by many collectors to be one of the finest military watches ever produced. Besides the difference in movements between the two, watch pricing is also about branding, levels of finishing, annual production levels, public perception, and supply and demand. Just as you'd expect to pay more for a Ferrari over a Corvette, there are different tiers in watch brands, and IWC is considered a luxury brand and is at the high end of the market. Laco, on the other hand, whilst they also produce several watches in different designs and movement options, none of them have an in-house movement. The Lacos are designed to be targeted at clients looking for a watch with a history, but at an affordable price point. So what is my recommendation? If money is not an issue and you want a watch with a brand that is instantly recognizable and luxurious, then the IWC is a fine choice. However, if you want an affordable watch with an equally fascinating aviation history, then the Laco is a no-brainer. You get a lot of watch for the money. For starters, it's made in Germany. It has a sapphire crystal and a display case back. It's somewhat water resistant with a 50 meters water resistance. It comes with two years international warranty and Laco does offer some degree of customization in terms of upgrading the strap, selecting anti-reflective coating and an option to get some engraving on the case as well. So that's pretty much it in terms of the video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Do it. Do it. Also, don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what do you think of the two watches. And if you knew about their history, please do let me know in the comment section below. Love to read all the comments. Until next time, bye for now.